Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Lana Turner and Chief Bosun's mate Victor Mature of the United States Coast Guard in Slightly Dangerous with Gene Lockhart. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When a manuscript called Slightly Dangerous turned up at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios, everyone must have stood up and shouted in unison, this is for Lana Turner. And I'd have joined in the shout if I'd been there. Certain stories seem to be made just for certain stars, and Slightly Dangerous was made for the lady who's known as Lana. Certain stars go well together, too. And I believe we have an ideal combination tonight with Victor Mature helping Lana to make the evening slightly dangerous. This is the story of a young lady who thinks she has a dull job and hankers for adventure, but finds a little more of it than she'd bargained for. The play's a delightful mixture of gaiety and drama, and that's a team we've always found unbeatable. After tonight's performance... Lana Turner goes back to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer to begin work in her new picture, Marriage is a Private Affair. And Chief Boson's mate, Victor Mature, goes back to his post with the Coast Guard after his first leave in many months. Servicemen are learning a good deal that's outside their regular curriculum. As a case in point, we have received a letter signed by three gentlemen calling themselves the Luxem Doughboys. In approved military fashion, they don't say where they're writing from, but they enclose a photograph showing two muscular young men in abbreviated attire. One of them is holding a box of Lux flakes in his hand, and the other is hanging up some washing on a makeshift line. Well, I'm going to stick my neck out now and predict that soldiers with this experience will be much in demand as husbands when the war is over. And if they drop a hint, that they're accustomed to using Lux Flakes. Well, it'll probably close the deal immediately. And with that prophecy, the curtain goes up on the first act of Slightly Dangerous, starring Lana Turner as Peggy and Victor Mature as Bob, with Jean Lockhart as Burden. Find a penny, pick it up. All day you will have good luck. I said to herself when she found the penny... Peggy said to herself that it was about time she had some good luck anyway. I'll say it is. What kind of a life is this I'm leading? Work, eat, sleep. Work, eat, sleep. Oh, I'm getting sick of it. Yes, Peggy has a habit of saying things to herself, mostly because she has no one else to talk to. But now she's found a penny, and her lucky day is about to begin. As she enters the store where she works, the small change mart, the chief clerk is beginning his daily speech to the employees. Good morning, friends. Ah, we are all very lucky indeed to be employed by such a beneficent store as the Coast to Coast Small Change Mart. And this morning, there is one among us who is going to realize her luck even more than the rest of us. It gives me great pleasure to present Merit Award number four to that lucky girl, Miss Peggy Evans, who works at the soda fountain. Uh, please step forward, Miss Evans. Peggy Evans, you're the first employee in the entire chain to arrive at your work 1,000 consecutive mornings on time. I therefore present you with Merit Award number four, redeemable for $2.50 in merchandise. Thank you, sir. And remember, another 1,500 punctual arrivals brings the $10 award. Keep your eye on it. Yes, sir. Now, uh, to your stations, everyone. Open the door, please, Mr. Bonwit. Gee, congratulations, Peggy. What a break, huh? Two and a half fish out of the blue. Oh, thanks, Mitzi. And just think, it only took me a little over three years. Huh? Three years and four months. And in another five years, I'll get $10 more. In merchandise. Yeah, wholesale, too. Well, I'll be 26 then. Well, what's the beef, honey? In five years, you're going to be 26 anyway. Is that bad if they give you 10 bucks, Velvet? Is that an insult? Oh, and I'll have such a nice set of memories. 2,500 mornings on time. <laughs> Those will be something to tell the children about. Except if I have a child, it might make me late that morning. Oh, it's bound to. But you ain't even married. No, I'm not. I'm not likely to be. Where could I meet a man? Well, anywhere. Where did I meet Hobart? Oh, don't tell me. Was it under a rock? Oh, Hobart'll doodle Johnny comes along. 
Oh, who's Johnny? Nobody. Johnny's what I call him. Call who? Whoever he is. Phil, Joe, Charlie, Chuck, Jimmy. I call him Johnny. Well, what about him? Look, honey, I know lots of gals that got the same kind of job as you got, and they love it. Why? Because they got their Johnny. Oh, and that makes everything wonderful, I suppose. It sure does. You just keep laughing at nothing all the time. Yep, that's the way it is when you meet up with Johnny. Well, I don't know any Johnny, and I'm not likely to meet one around here. Unless it's that drip who whistles at me in front of Cutler's drugstore. <laughs> so that's what got you mad, huh? Oh, no, Missy. It's just that I'm fed up. They played a dirty trick on me. Be yourself, will you? Nobody's played any tricks on you. Oh, yes, they did. When they were sitting around deciding who was going to be who, and when they came to me, they said, Now, let's make this one nobody. Let's not give any family, any home, anything. Let's just give her one thing, a job. The dullest little job we can find. And in the dullest little town we can find, Hotchkiss Falls. Ah, oh, take it easy, honey. Your job's not as bad as all that. Why, you, you, you meet a lot of people and you, you do a lot of interesting things like mixing up Sundays and stuff. Oh, stop it, Missy. I could do my job blindfolded. Oh, no, you couldn't, honey. There's a lot more to it than you think. Oh, I couldn't, huh? Absolutely blindfolded. Watch me. Here, give me that napkin. Oh, no, no, Peggy, don't do that. You'll get into trouble. I can mix anything they want. Oh, miss. Uh, one second, lady. Peggy, take off that blindfold. Watch this. Uh, order, lady. Well, I'd like... Uh, what's the matter, theory? Did you hurt your eyes? <laughs> no, this is a new company rule. Blindfold improves efficiency. Well, what won't they think of next? Um, I'll have a jumbo banana split. One jumbo coming up. Peggy, don't try it. Banana, slice it down the middle, so... Ice cream, chocolate on the right, strawberry on the left, and vanilla in the middle. Chocolate sauce, pineapple preserve, whipped cream, nuts, and a cherry on top. There you are. Well, get her. Did you see that? Nice going, kid. <laughs> okay, who's next? The blindfold mark. I don't see how she does it. Oh, miss, over here, please. Yes, sir. Order, please. Tell me, doesn't that blindfold handicap your work? <laughs> Well, order something and see. Well, I'm sorry to spoil your fun, but I'll have to ask you to take it off. And I'll have to ask you to leave that stool if you're not going to order. The management doesn't allow lounging. Look, number 122, I am the management. I'm the new general manager. Oh, well, I suppose you're pretty proud of yourself sneaking up and catching me when I wasn't looking. Now, wait a well, minute. Well, you've I... got nothing to squawk about anyway. I was doing my job. I doubt that. No one can do their best work with their eyes closed. You're a sort of squirt. You're... Don't you call me a squirt. Now, what's your order? A very simple one. Take that blindfold off and report to my office immediately. Come in, please. Yes, what is it? You wanted to see me. Oh, well, you, uh, well, you're not... Number 122. Oh, I... Uh, well, you look quite different without the blindfold. In fact, you're, uh, well, won't you sit down? I don't want to sit down. Well, why don't you go ahead and fire me? Now, let's not be hasty. As a matter of fact, you can't fire me. No, of course because not. Because I quit. Now, look, you, you mustn't do that, miss. You... The name is Peggy Evans. Well, that's a nice name. It isn't a name at all. It's just a label that works in a store. A machine on a track that rolls along and along and comes out nowhere. I hate my name. Now, 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 look. Someday you'll get married and change your name. I won't it. get married. I won't ever get married. Why, of course you will. An attractive girl like I you. I will not. Well, then, you'll be Peggy Evans until you die. So I... Wait a minute. I'll be Peggy Evans until I die. Why, that's an idea. Well, what do you mean? I'm not going to be Peggy Evans until I die. I'm going to be Peggy Evans until she dies. Oh, now, look, no, look, you mustn't say things like that. Now, look here, Miss Evans. You take the rest of the day off, and tomorrow we'll have I nice... won't be here tomorrow. This is the end of number 122. Oh, but Miss Evans... And it's I... the end of Peggy Evans, too. No, now, look, wait a minute. Please, let me go. No, look, I can't let you go. Now you're hysterical. I you... am not. Let go. Miss Evans. <laughs> Yeah? Excuse me, I'm looking for Peggy Evans. Oh, yeah? Well, does she live here? Who wants to know? Well, I do. I got her address at the store, and I... Oh, the store, huh? Get in here. Listen, what is this? Hey, Joe, this guy's from the store. I don't say. Now, wait. Hey, what's going on? Who are you, gentlemen? Police department. Police? Has, has anything happened to Miss Evans? Mr. Anderson, huh? What's your name? I'm Robert Stewart. What's your business with Peggy Evans? Well, I... I'm Peggy Evans' boss. Her boss? He's the one who drove her to it. He's the one. And now I'll never be able to rent her room again. There ought to be a law against skunks like you. Will someone please tell me what this is all about? Read him the note, Joe. Let him know what he's done. Sure. 
This is to tell whoever cares not to bother looking for me. I'll be happier wherever I'm going. I can't go on being Peggy Evans any longer, not after what happened at the store. I'd rather jump in the river. Mitzi can have my clothes. For the last time, Peggy. Oh, that's awful. You said it. Yeah. Now, now wait a minute. You got me all wrong. I didn't drive her to this. I, I only did my duty. I, I just told her to take off her blindfold. And now she's in the river. I hope you're satisfied, Brother Rat. <laughs> Oh, I always wanted to see New York. Well, here I am. And I'll never go back to Hotchkiss Falls. Never. Oh, but I wonder if I should have left that note. They probably think I committed suicide or something. Oh, well, it's the same thing. I'll never be Peggy Evans again, anyhow. Peggy Evans is as good as dead. So, now what? Hey, look at that sign on that beauty shop. Let graves give you a personality. That's it. A new personality. Well, go on in. Good morning, madame. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I need a new personality. Ah, but of course. <laughs> Can you do it? But of course. Well, all right. Now, how long and how much? Uh, let me see. A new hairdo, a new makeup, the right clothes. Mm, uh, four hours and $150. Well, it's a deal. <laughs> Is she coming around? I think she'll be all right just as soon as she recovers from the shock. Look, Doc, that painter was working for the Daily Star. This puts the paper in a bad spot. Uh, will you be able to testify that she's not seriously injured? I think so. Uh, well, that ought to keep down the damages. Oh, where am I? You see, now you're in safe hands and you're going to be all right. Now, just relax. Oh, my head. Where am I? Uh, you're in my office, miss. I'm Philip Durston, the manager of the Daily Star. Oh, my head. Her head. Oh, oh, my clothes. Look what's happened to my clothes. Now don't you worry. It's just paint. We'll buy you a whole new outfit. Oh. Hello, Baldwin. Get me a waiver of damages right away. Okay. Oh, my clothes. Now, please don't get excited. Just try and relax. Now then, uh, what's your name? Peg. No. No, it's... My name's Diane. I mean, it's Susie. It's... Oh, no, that's not either. I, I don't know it yet. Well, surely you can tell us your name. No, I can't. Leave me alone. I don't know. Oh, dear, dear. Uh, where do you live? I don't know. Oh, look at me. Look at my clothes. Mr. Durston, may I speak to you for a moment? Mm. Oh, oh, it's even on my head. What is it, Doctor? This is much more serious than I thought. She's suffering from a temporary loss of memory. Why does everything have to happen to me? Here's that waiver of damages, boss. Forget it. She can't sign it. She can't remember her name. Holy smoke. Shall I phone the police? No, you imbecile. Do you think I want every other paper in town building up her case and spreading the story that I'm an assassin? Oh, look. It's on my hair, too. Oh. Now, don't whine. Uh, I mean, don't cry, my dear. We'll take care of everything. I think the only way to handle this is to notify the Bureau of Missing Persons. Why, she's only been missing ten minutes. Baldwin, look in her purse. I just did. There's nothing in it. No identification? Not a shred. Oh, well, I do. Well, I now, do. Now, now, see here, miss. <laughs> it's on my hair. Now, whatever your name is, now you stop worrying. We'll find out who you are. We'll put your picture in the paper, and whoever you belong to will come and claim you. <laughs> Won't that be nice? No. No, you don't understand. I don't belong to anybody. Oh, nonsense. A fine-looking girl like you? <laughs> yeah, just wait till you see the great, big, beautiful picture we're going to take of you. But I tell you, it's no use. Nobody will come. Nobody will know me. Oh, yes, they will. We'll take care of you until they do. 
you will? Of course we will. And we'll ask you to remember how nice we were. Baldwin, have Miss Kingsley take her out and get her spruced up for the picture. Yeah. Yes, have her use my private expense account. Yeah. Anything at all you want, miss, you just ask. Anything? Anything. Uh, we'll take care of you. <laughs> well, it's awfully nice of you, but uh, you may have to take care of me a long time. <laughs> and I mean a long time. New York Daily Star, girl victim of amnesia. Do you know the girl in the picture above? If you do, communicate at once with the Daily Star. Hatchkiss Falls Gazette, small change mart boycotted by public manager accused of driving clerk to suicide. Sit down, Mr. Stewart. Now look, Mr. Stewart. I suppose you've read the Morning Gazette. Mr. Snodgrass, As I... district supervisor of the Small Change Mart Incorporated, I have a very unpleasant duty to perform. Mr. Stewart, the public is boycotting this store. They claim you drove that girl to suicide. But I didn't. There is some indication in the newspaper that if we were to discharge you as manager, the people of Hotchkiss Falls would reconsider. Let me see that paper. Mr. Quill will take over your duties. Thank you, Mr. Snodgrass. Hey, wait a minute. This looks like her. Like who? Peggy Evans. Look. Look at this picture. Amnesia victim in New York. Nonsense. Peggy Evans committed suicide. I fear you're indulging in some wishful thinking, Mr. Stewart. I don't care what you fear. I'll never forget her face. It's been haunting me ever since. And I tell you, this is her. No, don't be irrational, Stewart. How could it be? Here. It explains it here. She's got amnesia. Well, I fail to see the connection. Well, suppose she did jump in the river. And suppose the shock made her lose her memory. Dear, dear, we are grasping at straws. Suppose she forgot she was going to commit suicide. Suppose she swam ashore and then forgot who she was. And suppose she just wandered down to New York. Suppose you collect your things and get out of this office. But she isn't dead. I know she isn't. Look, I'm going to find her and bring her back here and prove to all of you that I didn't drive her to suicide. Do you think I want to spend the rest of my life with that on my conscience? And what's more, I'm going to make her tell the truth and get my job back. If you can bring back the dead, Stuart, you can certainly get back your job. I'll hold you to that, sir. Dead or alive, I'll have her in this office inside of a week. <laughs> In a moment, Mr. DeMille presents Lana Turner, Victor Mature, and Jean Lockhart in Act Two of Slightly Dangerous. Now for a mind-reading stunt. You're going to meet Miss Daisy McMazie on her way to work one bright morning. You'll hear what she says as she meets people. Right afterwards, you'll hear what she's thinking. First, she says hello to a girlfriend. Hi, Dot. Wonderful day. <laughs> Hi, Daisy. Hate to spoil the day, but you've got to run in your stocking. Say thanks a lot, Dot. Thanks for nothing. Always first with the bad news. And now, our scene shifts to the bus. Hello, Daisy. Say, you're looking... Never mind how I'm looking, Dick Bowen. And stop looking at my stocking run, you big drip. Soon, Daisy's in her office building, entering the elevator. Swell morning, Miss Daisy. Say, do you know... No, I don't know a thing today, Jack. But I know what you're grinning about. Wipe that grin off your face, off your face, off your face! And now, she's in her office. Good morning, Miss McMaisie. Please take some dictation, and uh, do you mind if I say... Not at all, Mr. Carlton. Do I mind? bald-headed penguin. Keep your eyes off that run. In just a minute, I'll pull out both your hairs. And back at her desk a few minutes later. Is that you, Daisy? It's Mother. I noticed as you went out the door that... Oh! Poor Daisy. There's no doubt about it. Stocking runs can wreck a girl's peace of mind. Wreck her budget, too. But the remedy is easy. Just stick to Lux. It really does cut down on runs. That's been proved by a famous laboratory, the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. They found that luxing rayon stockings cut down runs over 50%, compared with using a strong soap or rubbing with cake soap. So don't take chances. Use Lux Flakes for your stockings every night. And by the way, be sure to dry rayons 24 to 48 hours. Remember, it's Lux for good luck with stockings. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Slightly Dangerous, starring Lana Turner as Peggy and Victor Mature as Bob with Jean Lockhart as Burden. Peggy Evans, alias the girl who can't remember her name, is having a glorious time. Providing that no one recognizes her, she can go on living at the Daily Star's expense indefinitely. The possibilities are very exciting, thinks Peggy. What a break. Oh, I think after a while, though, I'd like to be recognized. Only not as Peggy Evans. Let's see, who would I like to be? A movie star? Oh, 
No, that's too tough. A long lost daughter to a nice old gentleman. A rich old gentleman. That's what I want to be, an heiress. This brainstorm sends Peggy scurrying to the public library. There in a newspaper of July 1927, she finds what she's looking for. Millionaire baby girl still missing. Police say no trace of Carol Burton, lost at circus two years ago. Baba, child's nurse, abandons home. Millionaire baby. Hey! That could be me! What do you mean? You've remembered something? Uh, do you know who you are? Uh, well, not exactly, Mr. Durston, but I'm sure it'll help. Well, go on. What is it? Baba. Go on, go on. Baba. What's the matter? Did you forget it again? No, that's it. Baba. Baba. What in blazes is the sense of remembering Baba? It doesn't mean a thing. Oh, but it must mean something. I have a feeling it's terribly important. How could it be Baba? Why, it doesn't make sense. Does it make sense to you, Baldwin? Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? Shut up. Oh, wait, I... <laughs> I suddenly remembered something else besides Baba. Well? I see a circus. Holy Ike, a circus. Hold on a minute, boss. Hey, Hiller. What have you got in your files on Baba? Baba? That's right. B-A-B-A. -A. Call me right back. Okay. I've got a feeling this may lead to something, boss. Circus. Baba. Don't you start doing that. Circus. Baba. Baba. Circus. Baba. Baba. Circus. Oh, for the love of... Shut up! It must mean something, boss. Baba. Circus. Yeah, Hiller? I've got three Babas. There's a Turkish mind reader who cut up his assistant with an axe. Claimed he read her mind. And now that's no good. What else? Then there's Baba the gorilla in the Bronx Zoo. Oh, fine. What's the third? There was a nurse called Baba who was in the Burden case, 1925. That's it. I thought I remembered it. The Burden case. Boss, the Burden case. Burden? The Burden case? Yeah, the nurse took the Burden kid to the circus and lost her. They never found the kid. That's it. Bring in that pile. Well, my dear, it was a lucky thing you remembered Baba. <laughs> Is it important? Important, Baldwin. Tell him to hold the front page for a replay. We've got a real story. Paper clue to missing bird and Everest. Cornelius Burden, the great long lost daughter. Paper. Paper. What time did Burden's secretary say he'd be here? Any minute now. Good. Frankly, I'm as excited as a little boy. Reunited after 17 long years, the rich but lonely old man, the wandering waif with the golden curls. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I wonder what he'll say. Oh, why, he won't say a word. He'll look at her and hold out his arms, and his voice will break as the tears stream down his weather-beaten old cheeks. Yes? Mr. Cornelius Burton is here, sir. He's... Send him in! Send him in! Well, he's on his way in now, sir. Where is he? Which one of you muckraking buzzards is Durston? Come on, speak up. I have... I am. So, you're Durston, eh? Well, I'm Cornelius Burden, and this is my lawyer, Stanhope. Well, I'm glad Durston. to meet you. I broke Burnell of amalgamated copper. I turned Baron of the SLNV into a shaking old man. And by everything that's holy, I'll break you like a dry twig. Now, Durston! Durston! I'm going to put you in jail. Oh, come now, Mr. Burden. Don't try appealing to my mercy. I've got none. But, Mr. Burden, I don't think you understand. I understand. You've been part of a criminal conspiracy to defraud. Mr. Burden, all I've done is try to help you recover your daughter. My daughter. Stan Hope, tell him. All you've done, Mr. Durston, is to print a story without verification, without substantiating evidence, and without consulting my client. But I've got evidence. I've got proof. This girl has amnesia, and the only thing she remembers is Baba. Yes, Baba. Ba. What kind of proof do you call that? There must be 40,000 nurses in the country named Baba. But she remembers the circus, too. Yes, circus. Hmm. What do you think of that? Well, now, you've got me there. I forgot that my child was the only one in the world who'd ever seen a circus. If you've had the decency to consult Mr. Burden, he'd have told you he has a method of identifying his daughter. He has? You have? Certainly I have. My child's nurse, Baba. She still lives with me. She's interviewed hundreds of these, these phony girls in the last 15 years and exposed every one of them. And she'll expose this one, too. And when she does, I promise you I'll prosecute you to the full extent of the law. And then I'll find out who this girl really is. And I'll put her in the penitentiary, too. And under her real name. Well, come on. Let's get started. Wait. Uh, he's, he's not my father. Aha! Uh -huh. Heaven's sakes, Miss Burden. And don't call me Miss Burden. Uh, what makes you say he's not your father? Well, his face. What? What about my face? Well, if, 
If I'd ever seen a face like that before, I know I'd remember. It's, well, it's the kind of face you couldn't forget. Especially if you'd been exposed to it as a child. So you don't want to go home with Mr. Burden, is that it? I don't want to, and I'm not going to. Well, young lady, in my opinion, that constitutes an admission of guilt. Cornelius, shall I phone the district attorney? Certainly, by all means. Now, wait a minute. Look, my dear, you can't do this to me. Unless you cooperate, Mr. Burden will have every right to think that you're concealing something, some uh, some guilty plan. In which you share, Mr. Durston. I do not. Don't you understand, Miss Burden? You've got to go with him. Well, all right. I'll go. But if I turn out to be his daughter, I'm... I'm going to run away from home. And I'll help you. Well, good luck, my dear. She'll need more than that, and so will you. Jimmy, come in here. Yeah, Mr. Boyden, you want me? What do you think I called you for? See that this girl doesn't try to get away. Okay, Mr. Boyden. Well, who's he? He's my bodyguard, but I'm lending him to you for the time being. Come on. Jimmy? Yeah, Mr. Boyden, you want me? What do you think I... Uh, bring that girl in here. Come on in, miss. Come on. Here she is, Mr. Boyden. All right. Now go downstairs and keep those reporters quiet. Okay, Mr. Boyden. Uh, come in here, young lady. Now, uh, you say you remember Baba, huh? Well, here she is. This is Baba. Uh, how do you do? Hello, child. Tell me, do you remember this room? Well, I... I don't remember anything. Ah, you see, Baba? Another fake. Hush. Listen, child. Carol Burden had a toy in this room which she loved more than any other. Always carried it around with her. Even slept with it at night. Which one is it? I don't know. Didn't he tell you? I I have amnesia. Amnesia or no amnesia, if you don't get the right toy, I'm going to hammer at you until you find out who you really are. But that's unreasonable. You bet it is. Hold your tongue, Master Cornelius. Look around you. Here are all the toys. Take your time. Well, this is the end, all right. What chance have I got of picking out the right toy? Why, the odds are about a hundred to one. Oh, I guess I might as well confess. Oh, wait. If I confess, I'll go to jail. Oh, I, I wish I were back in Hotchkiss Falls. Think. Think. Whatever that toy is, Burton must have just taken it out of that little safe behind the picture. It's still open. Well, that means that it couldn't be any one of the big ones. Oh, well, that's something. But gosh, at least half of them are small enough to fit in a safe. Oh, I, I wish I were back in Hotchkiss Falls. Well, well, which is it? Don't just stand there. Which toy is it? Well, I... Oh, you'll have to give me time. Oh, time, time. I'll go to jail if I don't get it right. Wait. Look at the toys in the window. They're all faded from standing in the sun. Well, that means it couldn't be there. It wouldn't get faded lying in a safe. Oh, the odds are going down. They're going down. Oh, but I still wish I were back in Hotchkiss Falls. Hey, what was it Baba said? She even slept with that toy at night. Well, if she slept with it, then it couldn't be that car, or the ten soldiers, or that merry-go-round. Well, they wouldn't let her take those to bed with her. She'd scratch herself. And it, it couldn't be that violin, or the Easter egg, or that doll's house. Why, they'd be all broken. Say something. Say something. Pick a toy. It seems to me you've had plenty of time. Oh, just one minute more, please. I, I seem to remember something. Well, go on. Remember it. These two dogs. Please choose a toy. Which one? That one. What? That one. Uh, that one? Master Cornelius, that's it. Carol, oh, my baby, my darling, oh. Oh, Carol. <laughs> Carol, how can you ever forgive oh, me? Oh, darling. Carol, my dear. Oh, what is it, darling? Tell Baba. Nothing. It, it, it's just so frightening to suddenly have a father you, you don't even know. Uh, listen, honey. I've always been afraid that if, that if I ever found you, why, you'd be such a stranger, you wouldn't want me or need me. But now, 
Now that you don't remember anything that's happened to you, why, you're just like a little child. You do need me. Oh, honey, I've done a lot more than find a little girl who that used to be my Carol. I've really found my kid again. Guys, wait a minute. Hold everything. Mr. Boyden ain't gonna see no more reporters, so you might as well beat it. Go on, now, go on. Beat it. Excuse me, limited. Outside, bud. Listen, I've got to see Carol Burden. I've got to see her right away. You hide me out. But look, it'll only take a minute. I've come all the way from Hotchkiss Falls. Out. But wait, Carol Burden Miss is... Miss Boyden can't be disturbed, see? She's suffering with ambrosia. Out. Listen, this is important. You want to get smacked, buddy? I demand to see Carol Burton. You want to get smacked? You don't dare touch so me. No, I don't dare. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, buddy. Carol Burton, beautiful heiress, to make first per public appearance tonight the Philharmonic Hall. Carol Burton. She's a fake. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, dear? Oh, golly. I'm so excited and happy. Happy, are you? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, for the first time in 17 years, I think I know what you really mean. <laughs> oh, you're an angel. Oh, gosh. If Missy could only see me now, wanting me to stay in Hotchkiss Ball for the rest of my life, to wait for a guy called Johnny would make me laugh at nothing. <laughs> well, I got better things to laugh at than nothing. Oh, but I wish Mr. Burton hadn't turned out to be so nice. That's what makes me feel so bad. Hey, I've got to stop feeling like that. Why, I'm the luckiest soda jerk that ever lived. Intermission isn't over yet. Will, will you have another lemonade, Carol? Oh, no, thank you, Father. Well, then we might as well get back. All right. Hello, Peggy. Oh! How are you? Say, look, you know, I've been waiting for a chance to speak to you. Just a moment, young man. Oh, it's okay. She knows me, and I didn't kill her. What? Come on, Peggy, tell the truth. I didn't kill you, did I? Go away. The man's mad. Jimmy! Look, I haven't slept. I haven't eaten all on account of you, Miss Evans. Go away! Jimmy, here! Come on, look, look, come on. You're not Carol Burden any more than I am. Carol, do you know this person? Why, I... I haven't the faintest idea who he is. You're lying, Peggy. You know you are. Let me alone. Jimmy! Here I am, Mr. Boyden. What's cooking? I am. This man here. Oh, so it's you again, huh? Listen, you, if you think I that you... I know, I don't dare. Oh! Okay, Mr. Boyden. Come along, Carol. Oh, that's the poor man. Yeah, Jimmy will take care of him. Sure, sure, he's okay. Come on, dear. Well, I hope he'll be all right. Of course. Hey, hey, you okay, chum? Oh, sure, sure, you're fine. Hey, waiter, take care of this guy, will you? Yes, sir. Now, up you go, sir. Oh. Now, just sit right there, sir. You'll be all right in a minute. Oh, she lied. She knows me. I could see it in her eyes. Well, don't brood about it, sir. There are lots more fish in the sea. She isn't drowned. She never was. Well, I didn't mean it like that, sir. She's a phony, that's what she is. She hasn't any more amnesia than I have. Well, are you sure you haven't got amnesia or, or something? How about a spot to eat, sir? No. A drink, sir? No. A nice, cool glass of lemonade. How about it, sir? Lemonade. That's what she was drinking. She ought to be mixing them instead of sitting here all dressed up with a glass of lemonade. Hey, wait. Have you changed your mind, sir? What do you have? I want that glass. A glass of what, sir? No, the glass. Her glass. There are fingerprints on glasses, aren't there? Well, not in the best places, sir. I... Look, get me her glass. I'm going to take these fingerprints one by one and wrap them around her lily-white throat. <laughs> Millionaire gives reception for long-lost daughter. Carol Burden to meet New York society. Hooey. My dear, don't you think you should dance with all those young men? They're waiting. Well, I have danced with them, Father, but I haven't found one as nice as you are. <laughs> <laughs> one, one jump over that split. Coming up. Oh, you do remember. It's that madman. Come on, Peggy, tell the truth. Take him away. Jimmy! What's the trouble? Throw him out. Throw this man Wait out. Wait a minute, look. I'm not leaving this house without my wife. Your what? My... Bless Mr. Burton, she's my wife. You're crazy. You know as well as I do that I'm not your... Carol, do you remember that you're not? Oh, no, Father, I, I don't. 
that's the hideous part about it. For all I know, it might be true. Of course it's true. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll take her home where she belongs. Just a minute, young man. Come with me, please. Go on, Mr. Stewart. Well, when I got home, she had disappeared. I was desperate until I saw her picture in the paper. I left Hotchkiss Falls immediately. Well, that's the whole story. And now, dear, if you'll get your things, we'll be trotting along. Thanks, Mr. Burden, for taking such good care of her. Never mind that, young man, and take your hands off my daughter. What? She's my wife? I know. She's your wife. But if you don't mind, we'd like a little proof. Proof? Yes, proof. That's right. Let's see your proof. Oh, proof. Uh, Our marriage certificate. Here you are. Marriage certificate? Sad, isn't it? All her beautiful memories gone. She doesn't even remember our marriage certificate. Why, she was so excited when she signed it, she poked her finger in the inkwell instead of the pen. There, her fingerprints. Well, Peggy, now, doesn't this bring it all back to you? No, it doesn't. And I don't believe I ever saw it before. You claim that this is her fingerprint? Yes, I told you. She stuck her fingers... Well, in that case, we'll just settle this matter immediately. Carol, put some ink on your finger, dear. We'll compare your fingerprint with the one on the certificate. Oh, well, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, I never thought about that. No, I bet you didn't. Now, place your hand here on the paper, dear. Her right forefinger, I presume. That's right, I think. (laughs) Sure, I wasn't left-handed when I was married to you. Mm, Quite sure. Ah, there we are. Now, we'll see. If these... Oh. Well, Father, what is it? Why, why, this is awful. These prints are identical. What? Lucky thing for me, that fingerprint... You folks were sure hard to convince. Why, this doesn't seem fair. I've, I've only had one daughter, and now I've lost her twice. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Burden, but it had to come out sooner or later that Peggy Evans wasn't your daughter. What do you mean she isn't my daughter? Of course she is. This thing proves she married you, but it doesn't prove she's not my daughter. But she's Peggy Evans. This girl is my daughter, whatever her name was. I couldn't be mistaken about that. But, but how did she get the name Peggy Evans? That's the question. I, I don't know. Well, the people that brought her up would know. Where are they? Well, I don't know exactly. Oh, how could he know? This whole thing's a fake, a frame-up. It must be. Now, now, darling, look, don't get excited. You know what it does to you. She breaks out in her rash all over. Oh, get away from me. You mean to say that you don't know anything about your wife's background? Well, uh, you see, she had amnesia when I met her. What's more, it kept happening on and off. Why, once I came home late at night, I, I, I kissed her, and she gave me a friendly smile, and then said, Who are you? Oh! It was the, uh... It was the... It was the friendly smile that burned me up. Oh, how can you? Mr. Stewart, what was the name of this town where you met Carol? Hotchkiss Falls. And that's where we're going right now. Come, lamb chop. Leave me alone. Come along. I'm going with you. What? What for? Oh, Father, you... Why, don't you realize what all this means? At last, we found a clue to your past. We can go back to Hotchkiss Falls and trace everything that's happened since the day I lost you. Oh, no. Why, of course we can. We can find all the people that knew you. I want to find out all about your past so I can protect your future. Wait, I... uh, Mr. Stewart, I want to speak to my father alone. I'll bet you do. (laughs) Will you wait outside, please? All right. Do hurry, though, dear. You know we have a long ride ahead of us. Father, that man isn't my husband. Call a woman's intuition if you want, but somehow I know. Yes, but what about the marriage certificate and the fingerprints here? Oh, I don't know. All I know is that he's lying. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll phone the police. Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) No, let's not do that. I, um, I have a better plan. I'll go to Hotchkiss Falls with Mr. Stewart, but you mustn't come along. But, my dear, Uh, you... Just the two of us. Then I can find out what this is all about. But do you think I'm insane? Let you go away alone with a man you feel is not your husband? Oh, but don't you see? If if I'm alone with him, I can find out everything. I can trap him because he... Well, he won't be suspecting anything. But it would be different if you were along, because he'd be on his guard. If I were to let you go and something happened to you... Oh, nothing will happen. I promise you. Well, well, don't forget one thing. If he bothers you in any way, you phone me immediately. I'll, I'll sleep with my clothes on. All right, Father. And, and be careful, Carol. Please. I will. Good night, dear. Good night. Oh, and, and Father. Yes, dear? I love you very much. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief
brief intermission, Mr. DeMille brings back Lana Turner, Victor Mature, and Jean Lockhart in Act Three of Slightly Dangerous. Meantime, there seems to be, shall we say, a slight vocal explosion going on in a house around the corner. Mary, what the blazes? Doggone Mary! Bill, darling, what is it? Mary, what did you do to my blue sweater? Why, I washed it. But it came out beautifully. Beautifully? Holy jumping catfish, look at it. What kind of a midget do you think I am to get into a pint-sized thing like that? Oh, Bill, that's not your sweater. That belongs to little Billy. Remember, I made him one just like his daddy's. Here's yours, the same size as ever, thanks to Lux. Plenty big enough even for a brute like you. Oh. Gee. Thanks. Well, Daddy's ego, his faith in himself, may be slightly shrunken, but not his favorite sweater. Not with gentle Lux care. You can't blame him for getting excited, though, because it's a real tragedy nowadays when woolens are washed the wrong way so they shrink. Strong soaps and cake soap rubbing do that, you know. But you don't have to worry about woolens when you use Lux Flakes. They're safe care for sweaters, blankets, all your washable woolens. Lux Care is thrifty care, too. You get so many suds from just a few flakes. Why, one big box of Lux will do 29 sweaters. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Besides being fine performers, our stars are a pin-up girl and a coast guardsman. We'll have a chat with them after the play. Now the curtain rises on the third act of Slightly Dangerous, starring Lana Turner and Victor Mature, with Jean Lockhart as Burton. Bob and Peggy are on their way to Hotchkiss Falls. There, Bob plans to exhibit her to the manager of the small change mart and clear himself. But Peggy Evans has a different idea. Well, I'd better play along with him a while. Oh, but not in Hotchkiss Falls. When we stop for something to eat, I'll pull some wires out of the car or something. I've just got to. Now they've stopped at a roadside restaurant where they're just finishing dinner. You don't have to look so scared, do you? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that it's all so embarrassing. Suppose you didn't remember me at all and suddenly you find you were married to me. Wouldn't you be scared? I think you know pretty well there's nothing to be scared about. I don't believe you. I think you're scared right now. Me? Well, you haven't even kissed me yet. Kissed you? Kissed me. Well, uh, do you want me to? <laughs> well, isn't it customary among husbands and wives? Not at all. Well, it might help us to get better acquainted. Yes, it ought to do that. Well, then. Okay. My, it uh, does sort of mm, scare you, doesn't it? Well... <laughs> well, I feel better acquainted now, do you? No, I, I just feel better. <laughs> Tell me about us, Bob. Were we very happy? Well, yeah, I, I think we must have been. Bob, was I a good wife? Oh, ideal. What is your ideal? Well... She has to think I'm smarter than anybody else in the world and stronger and better looking. And she has to love to dance with me. What else? Well, she has to be happy with what we've got instead of discontented with what we haven't got. <laughs> and what do you do in return for all that? Nothing. That's what makes it so ideal. <laughs> well, I, I can't imagine any girl living up to that ideal. Oh, she could if she loved me. Well, I, I guess I have a lot to learn about love. Mm, it's possible. <laughs> But you're going to teach me, aren't you? Everything I know is at your disposal. Well, where do we begin? Well, first we dance. Now get this one. This is a half rumba and half my own. Oh, it's wonderful. What do you call it? The Hotch Kiss Falls Limp. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, look at me, I... I'm laughing at nothing. You don't uh, feel dizzy, do you? Hey, Johnny. No, Bob. Johnny. Look, I'm not Johnny. <laughs> no, I, I guess not. It, it isn't reasonable. It certainly isn't. Come on, we'd better get started. Well, what's the matter, Bob? I don't know. Something... I know I've got plenty of gas... Evening, folks. Having a little trouble? Yes. Is there any place around where I can get this thing fixed? Well, there's an all-night garage. There is? Yep, but it closes at 9 o'clock. <laughs> well, we'll 
We'll have to sleep right here, I guess. Oh, I, I don't think that'll be very comfortable. <laughs> sure it won't. I got just one room left at the motel. Motel? What motel? Right over there. I run that, too. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, wait, we, we couldn't stop there. Well, why not, Dolly? We'll be ever so much more cozy than in the car. But, but we can't do that. Well, of course we can, dear. I'm sure it won't be expensive. You see, mister, it's sort of our wedding night. Now, ain't that something? Uh-huh. Mm. Now, I'll take care of your baggage. Oh, thank you. Come on, Bobby, it's late. No, wait, listen, look, I, I, I haven't got any money here. I lost my wallet. Oh, Bob. Now, ain't that a crying shame? Yeah, it's certainly tough. Well, good night. We'll stay right here. Oh, no, you won't. I wouldn't have it on a conscience. Uh, you can have the room for nothing. Oh, you're a darling. <laughs> nice of him, wasn't it? Giving us this room. Yeah, but look, I, I well, don't... Well, I think I'll get into something comfortable. Peggy. Yes? Uh, do you know how to play cribbage? Oh, no, I don't. But you must teach me sometime. Look, uh, don't you think this has gone far enough? Far enough for what? Well, I mean, under the circumstances, maybe I'd better go. I, I'll tell you what. I'll take another room. Oh, but there are no other rooms. Oh, don't be nervous, dear. Look, you, you've got to answer me one question. Maybe there's been a mistake here. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've got to know. Well? That night at the concert, when I called you, Peggy, you were frightened to death, weren't you? Answer me. Well, yes. Why? Well, you... You sneaked up behind me and shouted in my ear. You would have been frightened, too. But you recognize me. Now, don't deny it. You, you knew me when you saw me. Well, I had seen you before. Ah, uh, not now, so you admit it. Well, certainly. It was that day of Father's when you were with the reporters and... Jimmy punched you. I saw you from the hall. You... you don't remember me from Hotchkiss Falls? No. Oh, but what's the difference? Now get some sleep, darling. We want to get an early start. Oh, I, I've made a terrible mistake. Listen, I'm not your husband. Oh, but I don't understand. That's all there is to it. I'm... I'm not your husband at all. Oh, but you must be that... that marriage certificate. Well, that was a forgery. A fake. I... I thought you were a fake, too. I had your fingerprints taken off of a glass that you used and... Oh! Look, it's all right. Now, uh, don't worry, please. I I'll take you home to your father in the morning. Now, I'm, I'm going out to the car. Good night. Good night. Oh, just one more thing. You're Carol Burden, all right. You're not Peggy Evans. How do you know? Because Peggy Evans was a whining little coward, afraid to face life. She was hysterical and selfish. And you're the finest, the bravest girl that ever was. You were willing to accept me, a complete stranger, as your husband. You left your home and your father to come with me because... Well, you thought it was right. You're the most wonderful girl I ever knew. That's all. Good night. Good morning. Oh, hello. <laughs> did, did I wake you? No, I wasn't asleep. Just thinking with my eyes closed. What time is it? 6.30. Well, what woke you up so early? Oh, I, I haven't been sleeping either. I was thinking with my eyes open. Bob, I... I feel that... Well, if you'll feel better when your father gets here. My father? Yeah, well, you... Why should he come here? Well, you see, I phoned your house after I left you last night. I thought you'd want to get rid of me as soon as possible. He ought to be here any minute. Oh. Now, please, look, don't do that. I, I know I've done a terrible thing to you, but I, I can't stand seeing you cry. That's not why I'm crying. No? No. I'm... I'm crying because I'm never going to see you again. You... You want to keep on seeing me after what I've done? Yes, I do. Why? Because, because I'm crazy about you. What? You can't be. That, that's impossible. It is not. It isn't? No. Gosh, that's, that's what I've been thinking about all night. Thinking how it could never happen. Thinking what a fool I, I was to even think about it. But now you... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't touch me. I'm sorry. I guess I must be hearing things. I, I thought you said... I thought you said you were crazy about me. I did say it. Well, I'm right. You did say it. Oh, but, but there's something else I've got to say, too. Something that'll spoil everything. But, well, I am Peggy Evans. What? Yes, I... Oh, I couldn't go on cheating you. I know what you'll think of me, that I'm a whining little coward, afraid to face life. But I had to tell you all the same. Okay. So long, Peggy. Oh, Bob. No, go away. No, I won't. Not until you've heard what I have to say. Bob, I'm not asking you to even like me again. I just want you to know that I'm not what you think. 
I didn't mean to make you lose your job. And I didn't mean to steal anything from Mr. Burden, honestly. I was just lonesome. And I didn't have enough sense to wait until you came along. But how could I have known that you were... Well, you were what I was lonesome for. You know, every instinct I've got tells me how to beat you over the head. Every instinct but one. I couldn't hate you, darling, unless you turn out to be a female impersonator. And I'll bet you my bottom dollar you're not. Oh, Carol, Peggy, whatever your name is, darling. Yes, Bob? Look, don't be unhappy, dear. I, I forgive you. Of course you forgive me. If you love someone, what else can you do? Bob, you are going to wait for me, aren't you? Why? Where are you going? To jail. To jail? I... Oh, that's silly. Oh, but you don't know Mr. Burden. He's sweet, but he has a terrible temper, and when I tell him the truth, well, he won't rest until... There she is. Oh, Bob, he's here. Carol. Now, Cornelius, don't get excited. Listen, don't say a word. Don't tell him a thing. Carol. Oh, baby, are you all right? Uh, why, yes, I, I'm i fine, Baba, but... Shut I... up. I, I mean, shut up, dear. You, you see, she hasn't been feeling very well. Perhaps if you came back later tomorrow or something. Oh, don't listen to him. I'm all right. I want to tell you that... Look, now, she had a spell or something, and it isn't serious. Nothing to worry about. Carol, what's he done to you? Uh, well, nothing, really. He's, he's just saying that because he loves me and I love him, he, he's trying to protect me. No, she's trying to protect me. I, I forged that marriage certificate. I, I even had a rubber stamp made of her fingerprints and faked that, too. I'm not her husband at all. You fiend. Why did you do it? Well, I thought she was somebody else, a girl I used to know, Peggy Evans. She's dead. It's no use, Bob. You can't stop me. Whatever she says is a lie. Go on, Carol. Well, I... I know you won't forgive me, Mr. Burden. And I'd rather die than hurt you like this. You're an angel, and I'd, I'd give anything in the world if you were my father. But you're not. I, I'm not Carol. I never was. I'm... Peggy Evans. Oh, don't be silly. Baby. Oh, please, please, both of you. I'm telling the truth. Bob, tell him that I am Peggy Evans. Why should I? I don't believe you are. And neither do I. But... I guess I ought to know my own daughter. Well, well, we're going to Hot Kiss Falls. No, my dear. We're going home. I'll get your things. I'll help you, Mr. Burden. Oh, but I, I can't go on lying the rest of my life. I can't go on cheating. Oh, stop that sniveling, Peggy Evans. Peggy Evans? Well, then you do believe me, Bob. Of course I do. Oh, well, then you'll tell Mr. Burden. I'll tell him nothing. Besides, he knows it anyway. But he's not my father. In the... What do you mean, he knows it anyway? He found out last night. He called Hodgkiss Falls. Well, then why didn't he just say so? For two reasons. It would kill him to admit that he'd been fooled. And it would kill him to give you up. You mean he wants me to go on being his daughter? If you'd a lick of sense, you'd see that. But how can he want me? I don't belong to him. Stop your nonsense. You've made him happier than he's been for 17 years. Now, come on. Show him what you're made of. All right, let's go. Here's your grip, Miss Burden. Come on, come on. Do... Do you really want me to go home with you? Of course I do. That is, if... If you want to come, do you? Well, I... I'd like to see anybody try to stop me. Hey, what about me? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, what about him? Oh, well, I love him. Well, uh, that's a fine how do you do. Oh, but I can't help it. Well... I've got a daughter. I, I might as well saddle myself with a son-in-law. Me? Certainly you. Well, I... We... Now, I'm in a hurry. I'll give you 30 seconds to make up your mind. Well, it's made up now. Oh, Carol. Oh, Johnny. The name is Bob Carol. The name is Peggy Johnny. You know, maybe we'd better just call each other Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> maybe talking at all is just a waste of time. <laughs> Before our stars return to a curtain call, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, who went to a Navy wedding the other day. And here's something that really happened. The bride was cutting the wedding cake with the groom's sword when the photographer said... I'd like to get one more picture of that, only you'd better wash the cake off that sword. So the groom handed the sword to the bride with a flourish and said... Okay, honey. You're the dishwashing department from now on. <laughs> well, he was very cute about it and very proud of his new bride. And I felt as though I ought to produce a box of Lux and hand it over then and there so she'd start her dishwashing career off right. She looks smart enough to know about Lux anyway, though. She won't let the wrong kind of soap ruin those pretty hands of hers. That's a good point, Libby. It's not the dishwashing you do. It's strong wash day soaps that give your dishpan hands. With gentle Lux flakes, your hands stay soft and lovely. In fact, even if you've let your hands get that ugly dishpan look, 
When you change to Lux, they'll soon be soft and smooth again. That's been proved by many, many women in a whole series of tests. And it's a very easy thing to prove for yourself. So put Lux Flakes on your shopping list for tomorrow. If your dealer is out of it right now, he'll have more soon. Then use Lux for dishes every day and see for yourself how kind it is to hands. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Well, we'll certainly take anything else on the slightly dangerous side that Lana Turner and Chief Boson's mate, Victor Mature, have to offer. If I were a sailor, I'd be calling Vic Chief. Well, in fact, I will anyway. Welcome back, Chief. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to be here again. Sounds like a pretty exciting job you have now, Vic. Well, plenty of other guys are in the same business. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what you've been doing? Well, I've been on North Atlantic convoy duty for about 11 months. Tell me, Vic. Is it true that a sailor has a girl in every port? No, sir. Well, why not? Well, uh, you don't stay in port long enough. <laughs> By the way, you know, we have girls in the Coast Guard now, too. They're called spars, and we need plenty more of them. It's a swell chance for girls between 20 and 36 to serve their country. <laughs> well, the spars are doing a fine job, Vic. I'd be very glad you could spend part of your leave with us. And day after tomorrow, the entire nation will show the men of the Navy we're behind you by celebrating Navy Day. Well, we're very proud of the service, sir, and I hope to make the folks at home proud of us. Now, you've done that already, Vic. Lana, I believe this is the first time you've been here since your baby was born. It's a bit hard to realize that one of America's leading pinup girls is now a mother. Well, I have a little pinup girl of my own now. <laughs> Has to be pinned up all the time. <laughs> uh, from what I hear, your, your picture is being pinned up more than ever. When do you go back to work in pictures, Lana? Well, I'm getting ready now, Vic. Irene, the designer at the studio, is making the clothes for my new picture now. I guess that's pretty tough work for a woman, getting a lot of new clothes. Oh, well, we can stand it now and then. <laughs> well, congratulations on the baby, Lana. And if she's as lovely as her mother, let me make our first screen test. I'll remember that. Now, what's your play next week, Mr. DeMille? Now, one of the big successes of the current screen, Lana. It's the paramount hit, So Proudly We Hail. And the stars are Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, Veronica Lake, and Sonny Tufts. <laughs> As the same stars you saw in the picture, one of the finest casts we've ever had, and the players in keeping with the cast, an heroic story of Bataan, with Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, and Veronica Lake as the army nurses of So Proudly We Hail. I think you can hail that one very proudly, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, Veronica Lake, and Sonny Tufts in So Proudly We Hail. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. The appearance of naval personnel on this program does not constitute an endorsement of the product advertised, since the Navy Department does not endorse any product. Ladies and gentlemen, every American kitchen can be one of the arsenals of democracy. Don't let munitions go to waste in your kitchen. Every spoonful of fats you have left over can be made into glycerin used in high explosives. Save all your meat drippings, bacon grease, and every bit of waste fats, and take them to your meat dealer often. Save fats and save American lives. Heard in tonight's play were Leo Cleary as Durston, Verna Felton as Baba, Eddie Marr as Jimmy, Florence Haloff as Mitzi, and Roland Drew, Walter Sonderling, Robert Harris, Ed Emerson, Mason Moltzner, Griff Barnett, Fred Mackay, Charles Seal, Norman Field, and Truda Marson. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, and Veronica Lake in So Proudly We Hail. With Sonny Tuff.